Ladies and gentlemen, finally we have some gaming benchmarks of the Ryzen 9000 X3D variants. And this is of particular interest because these results are actually internal from MSI and have made their way online courtesy of a factory tour that Hardware Lux were invited to by MSI. Obviously, there are a ton of new products which are going to be releasing over the coming months, including, of course, new motherboards, processors from Intel and, uh, well, AMD in this case. Plus, obviously, Blackwell is going to be happening uh, probably next year, but that doesn't seem to be part of this factory tour or anything like that. It seems to be motherboard-focused. Anyway, the results here are from gaming and also synthetic, but I'm going to focus the majority of the efforts of this video on the gaming results. And here there are two processors in the X3D lineup of uh, Ryzen 9000 that are being tested, both an 8 and 16 core. I'm sure you would agree that the 8 core is particular interest for many gamers. And uh, obviously we don't know prices at this point officially. Unfortunately, one small issue here uh, well, actually, there's two small issues other than the lack of pricing, of course. The first of which is that the lineup of games is kind of eyebrow raising. We have Far Cry 6, Shadow of the Tomb Raider and Black Myth Wukong. And the second problem is that we don't know the settings. We know that they are being conducted at 1080p with an RTX 4090. But obviously, in terms of the visual settings themselves, like is it running a very high ultra, whatever, Unfortunately, we don't know that stuff. But anyway, let's start things out with the 8-core variant, and then we'll go into some comparisons to get us a better lay of the land. So Black Myth Wukong is essentially a wash. This game is so GPU-heavy um, that, uh, well, 61 versus 62, I would say that that's essentially margin of error. Um, I would love to see minimums as well as highs and all of the other metrics, but I'm assuming this is just averages. Shadow of the Tomb Raider, 288 versus 295, so that's a 2% increase. And the biggest performance bump here is blatantly Far Cry 6. It's a 13% increase, 168 versus 190. Switching to the 16-core variant, and there's not really much to say. Uh, once again, Far Cry 6 is by far the largest improvement in performance. We're looking at 160 versus 178. Shadow of the Tomb Raider is also up 4%, so that's quite interesting. So let's try to get us some comparison, shall we? Now, of course, once again, the really big problem here is because we don't know all of the settings that are used, for example, ray tracing, the exact quality settings, things like the CPU settings and so on, we can't do 100% one-to-one comparisons, not least of which because obviously Windows updates, drivers and so on are also going to make quite a difference. With that said, let's have a look at a few results for Far Cry 6 because, again, it's by far the largest metric. So I'm going to use overclock3d.net. Again, I'll leave a link to this uh, review in the video description. And if we look at the longest bar here, which is both white and green, we can see that the 7800X 3D in their tests at 1080p are scoring 184 frames a second versus the 9700X, which is scoring around 181 frames a second. So you could basically say that the 9700X in this particular result and the 7800X 3D are essentially awash with one another. Unfortunately, things become a little different when we compare it against yet another processor, uh, sorry, another website, excuse me, not another processor, another website, Guru 3D. So the 9700X here is scoring 186 frames a second. And we can see that the 7800X 3D is scoring 208. So again, things like BIOS revisions and a ton of other things are really going to make a big impact here, which does, once again, make things quite difficult. So it's going to be very interesting to see how well these compare against one another, quite frankly. Um, but yeah, I'll... I'll I'll be very curious to hear what you guys think. What do you think the gaming performance is going to be? But we also have some synthetic results. Now, unfortunately, uh, once again, there's only a couple of benchmarks, and they are sticking to Cinebench. I would love to have seen more productivity stuff being tested, you know, yada, 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 but it is what it is. So the 90... Um, the 9000 X3D variants versus the non-X3D variants, and this is where the clock frequency has been fixed to 5.2 gigahertz. And you can basically see that the uh, two 8-core processors 
I'm going to essentially say that that is identical, um, to be honest with you. And once again, the same thing could be said uh, for the 16 core variants. I mean, they even state that the performance is the same. Uh, then they also are running it, which I believe is essentially, a, it can go kind of balls to the wall. Uh, and again, I would say that largely speaking, the performance of the uh, 16 core is pretty much identical. Uh, we can see 42,472 versus 42,377. That's the kind of variance. In fact, you can see greater variance like run to run anyway. It's around 2%, however, uh, decrease for the single core. However, the uh, eight core processor, uh, it's a six ish, well, six and a half percent technically improvement in the uh, multi core score. And of course, single score is a small decrease. And then we have yet another result as well. Um, and this is again Cinebench. And uh, here we are looking at tests being done, however, against the previous generation. So you can see that with the, uh, let's pick on, mm, let's pick on the eight core processor first, shall we? Uh, so 28% improvement in multi-core and 18% uh, improvement in single core. Meanwhile, the 16 core variant is around 10% improvement for single core and a 16% of course in multi. So of course that's down to a few reasons. One of course all of the architectural improvements for Zen 5, the fact that it's running at high clock frequencies as well for these X3D parts and yeah. So overall, these do look very promising processors. I, I know there's a lot of folks who are already doing comparisons versus Arrow Lake and all that stuff, but at this point, I think until we do get independent benchmarks, I think it's very difficult to know 100%. Also, it's going to be very interesting to see how these parts, specifically Arrow Lake, overclock. Um, there are some reports that Arrow Lake is very overclockable, but of course, if you overclock it, then you can make a really good point, but then you're just killing the... Um, the energy efficiency of Arrow Lake. So it's like, eh. Uh, all I'm going to say is that I think the next generation of processors is going to be super interesting. Um, I, I, It's not like I expect one to win or whatever. I, I you know, at the end of the day, I'm just going to say to you guys just to buy the best one. At this point, however, I would say that obviously if you're already on an AM5 platform, let's just hypothetically say that you've got like a, a vanilla six or eight core uh, Zen 4 CPU and you need more cores and you know you're going to upgrade anyway then obviously sticking to AM5 makes logical sense but if you're running like an older AM4 CPU or something from Intel like a 9700k or whatever and you're like well maybe I should upgrade in preparation for the RTX 1590 I would just probably wait see what happens uh, maybe even wait until the early part of next year until all of the BIOSes have been upgraded uh, so updated Windows has had multiple updates and of course you get a better understanding of what's the best motherboard and all of that stuff with that said guys let me know what your thoughts and opinions are on this um, I think the results are interesting particularly for Far Cry 6 however uh, obviously Black Myth Wukong just basically gives us absolutely no performance data at all take care of yourselves bye for now